<laughs> if you're a born again Christian and you're seeking to walk with God, to talk with Jesus, to walk in His Spirit, you're going to be faced by challenges that are going to blow you out of the water. Usually, most of those challenges are going to come from other Christians. Because God put us and allowed us to live in this world, but the consequences of sin upon this world has caused us all kinds of people to act and react in different ways that has planted seeds in their soul, so to speak, and caused certain things to happen in their life that maybe framed their mindset a certain way. And God is at work to rearrange everybody's mindset so that they come into agreement with Him according to the Word of God, according to the Scriptures we've been given, and according to His Spirit, which He's given each and every one of us. And that's what sometimes people forget. God has given to every man a measure of faith. He's given us a certain amount of faith, a certain amount of His Spirit, a certain amount of relationship that we have with God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. He's allowed us to know Him either intimately and personally, like some of us, or maybe distant and far away and through other people sometimes in the way some people talk about Him. But irregardless of how you know Him, if you are saved, if you've been appropriated by God Himself and He has saved you from your sins, then you'll find that one of the challenges to growth that you have are other Christians. You see, God wants us to be so in love with Him that when He tells us to do something, we just go ahead and do it. Now, one of the things He told us to do was to love one another as He has loved us because He knew we would spend the rest of our lives trying to live up to that measure of faith that we've been given. Because we can only really, you know, love someone by the faith we have in Jesus, not because of what the person is. Do you get that? We can love someone because of what Jesus is, not because of what the person is. So we love someone because Jesus loves us, not because the person's lovable. <laughs> Believe me, you were very lovable when God loved you and when God saved you. Matter of fact, you might not still be lovable. <laughs> and that's according to the measure of faith that God has given us. Some of us grow at different times and places. Sometimes it may take a long period of time to grow. Sometimes it may take a short. But the bottom line is, you're kind of stuck with having to get along with, having to deal with other people. And those people are members of the faith. We are people who are one in the Spirit, one in the Lord. Now, just as different as Jesus is, in some ways, from the Father, and in some ways as different as the Spirit is from Jesus, likewise, each and every one of us are different from each other. I may be a hand or a foot, or a nostril or a lung, but... I am a member of the body of Christ because I know Jesus and Jesus knows me. You may be a fingernail or a hangnail or you might be a, an eyeball or a, a mouthpiece or whatever it may be. But you too are a member of the body of Christ. So you're going to find that in this world you're going to run into conflicts of interest. Places where you butt heads with other people. And those people may not want to get along with you. The point being is that they may not have the knowledge of the Word of God that you have. They may not have the same personal relationship with God that you do. They may not even want to have what you've got. So you say, okay, and you let them learn as they will choose to learn according to the measure of faith that they've been given. Because God is the one who measures out to us faith. He's the one who's given us the ability to follow Him and to be directed by Him personally, even as we learn from the Scriptures to know certain things that we know are recorded there for our benefit, which is to love one another. But 
Sometimes it takes a little challenge to get there. Praise waiteth for thee, O God, in Zion. To us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. In other words, there's only one Lord Jesus, and that's Jesus. <laughs> I mean, there's no two Jesuses, there's no three Jesuses, there's just Jesus. All men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which has sent him. There's some people that want to honor the Father by doing the Old Testament law and not love their brethren. They say, oh, well, they're not doing the Sabbath, or they're not, they're not doing this, or they're not doing that, and they're trying to get legalistic about it. And God says, I want you to love one another because I've died for you. By grace are you saved, and that not of yourself, lest any man should boast, but it's been given to you freely as a gift, grace for grace. So likewise, if you've been given grace, extend grace. If you've been forgiven, extend forgiveness. It's that simple, but I know how hard it is. Believe me, I have people that I butt heads with that drive me nuts. Because not that they're so frustrating, but that they challenge me to grow up and to mature in my faith so that I could overcome them with my love. That's the way it works. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. When you give thanks to God for the frustrations of people that are in the faith, that you know they're going to go to heaven, but they still frustrate you, then you just let God lead them by giving thanks to him for putting them in your life to maybe challenge you in ways you would not be challenged any other way, so that you can learn to love as he loved. Believe me. Jesus had not only 12 disciples, he had, you know, 70 and 120 following him that, man, you know, you think they all got along? They're a bunch of Jews. Let's get real. Come on. <laughs> Ooh. Whoso offereth praise glorifies me, and to him that orders his conversation aright will I show the salvation of God. God will bless you if you will yield your rights and privileges and righteousness that you think you have to stand up and make yourself assertive God wants you to be not assertive but discernment he wants you to step back away from those conflicts and let him work out his salvation in a person because you can step back and watch and see how God will deliver you I've done it all my life I've had people chastise me beat me I've had people fire me I've had people do all kinds of things to me you know and I've always said okay you know and said the words that I write now oh well and I've walked away and over the years sometimes even weeks sometimes even days I've looked back and watched and seen what happened to the person that was doing whatever they were doing to me and I went whoa man God you're awesome man if I would have taken revenge or defended myself you know I might have got some personal satisfaction but I wouldn't have been as harsh or as <laughs> stubborn as you are you seem to be in protecting me you know it's like wow lord you come down hard when i let you do it and i even pray for their forgiveness so if you want to kind of get a reverse psychology here think about it this way would you rather god <laughs> deliver to them the consequences of their reaping what they sow or do you want to give to them your own two cents throw your own four cents in there and add your own six cents, you know, and maybe give them ten cents of your mind. I'd rather let God deal with them and first he will crush them, but then he'll bring them back up. You see, that's the difference. We might beat ourselves down by wanting revenge on someone that really makes us like the world, but God, once he's chastised, then he brings them up and restores to them the joy of their salvation so that they can find the truth of learning through the experiences they may have maybe treated you unfairly maybe it treated you unkind but that's for God to deliver that's for God to reveal not you you just have to hey you know walk away and give thanks to the Lord you know and praise his name I beheld and lo a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and tongues and people stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes. Salvation to our God which sits upon the throne and unto the Lamb. 
Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. If you took every one of those words apart and you realized it's his and not yours, then you won't assert yourself and try to be, oh, I got to stand up for my rights. As a matter of fact, you might give up your right and privileges to God to do as he chooses through his spirit so that he could accomplish so much more with what he has in store for that person than what you might try to do with your assertiveness or your defensiveness or your attitude and actions that you think you got to do against someone. And I'll admit, you know, <laughs> man, there are lots of times that people misunderstand me and boy, I stand back and I go, you know, Lord, could you show them my heart? You know, because lately my, my exterior just doesn't seem to be showing my interior. <laughs> and the reality is, is sometimes God does, sometimes God doesn't. I have had people say that, rarely, because <laughs> not too many people see that inside part, that very tender, gentle person. And when I'm shy and quiet and kind of grinning and not saying much, they see that. But when I'm the normal outside person that talks, you know, and shares Jesus and, you know, discusses Bible and everything else, they go, oh man, that guy's so full of pride, you know, he's just an egotist, he's so, you know, so wrong, so wrong, and I'm going, Lord, <laughs> you know, it's still me, what happened? You know, and God sometimes won't review you the way you really are or the way you think you are, but God will use the circumstances to reveal his choice of how he's going to teach you in the midst of it and how he's going to teach the other person in the midst of conflict when you run into that conflict of interest. So allow God to do what you may not be able to do for yourself, what you may be able to do for yourself but you shouldn't do, and what God wants to do in every given situation if you'll let Him lead you.